Hi everybody, it's Claire and welcome to um, a bit of a different tutorial. So today you can see that I've got some um, new pastels, some Prismacolor new pastel sticks out and that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be um, looking at how to do this beautiful pastel vignette background. So a vignette is something that focuses your eye on a piece of work and what you'll tend to find, it can be central or it can be off centre, but there'll be a lighter part of the design which focuses your eye into that piece of artwork that you want to draw attention to. OK, so today is about vignettes. So you can see I've got this beautiful finished piece here. It's from actually, if I just move it out of the way here, you'll see it's from this beautifully cute book. It's called A Million Sloths, Super Cute Creatures to Colour by Lulu Mill. OK, so I've just got this as a finished piece. What I decided to do, as I say, was the pastel veneer background, which I thought would make a really good teaching point. And I've chosen in this instance to use metallic paints to finish the detail off. OK, so if I just you can see the metallic paints shining there. OK, so let me just quickly show you this lovely book because this is where it came from. So this is not the first book by uh, by Lulu. So her most recent ones are this one and um, A Million Unicorns. So she's got a whole series of creature books out, creature colouring books called, um, um, I think the first one she told me was A Million Cats and then that was followed by dogs and owls and bears. Um, and then she's got one planned for next year called A Million Mermaids. Um, and I think, yes, yeah, so this one is the one that's currently out now. And if I just quickly show you some of the super cute designs. So you can see, and it's actually quite nice paper. So it's quite, quite, you can hear that the paper is quite nice and thick. So if you were careful with your, if you wanted to use paints, if you were careful with your paints with the water content, I think this would be, would be fine. But I'm just going to quickly flick through and give you some, give you some idea of the, of the beautiful designs if this was one of the books that you wanted to ask for for Christmas this one's quite a nice one because it's got a pre printed black background so if you wanted to do a nighttime scene this one would be a good one to pick so you can see why it's called a million one sloths this one looks like Amsterdam um, so you can see that every design every page has um, some super cute little sloths in it for you to colour in And I just picked up this copy off Amazon. I think it was about five or six pounds. And you can see that there's loads and loads and loads and loads and loads of designs. This one would probably be one light colour because you know what I like with my mushrooms and my light sources. But if you fancy this in your stocking for Christmas, I think it's quite a nice little, a nice little gift. OK, and as I say, Lulu does have quite a few books to choose from if sloths weren't your thing. If you like cats or dogs or bears or owls, I know I know one of my good friends is um, is particularly fond of owls. Then uh, then these series of creature books are the ones for you to try. OK, so I'll just move that out of the way for now. So let me just explain something before I go to the rest of the kit. So I knew that once I'd done this, um, this beautiful pastel that background that I wasn't going to then rub out um, the design, rub out the detail of the design rather, to use coloured pencils. I knew that I wanted to, to use some watercolour paints. So what I did was I chose to um, photocopy the design and print it out on watercolour paper. So this is actually on watercolour paper. This isn't a page cut from the book. I just made a copy because I knew I wanted to paint. So this is my copy, which we'll come back to in a moment, but I just wanted to show you the paper that I used, just in case you're interested. So um, if I do that, I use this beautiful Faber-Castell book. It's just a plain watercolour pad, A4, 40 sheets, and it's proper, proper watercolour paper. OK, so it'll hold the paint very, very well. OK, so I'll just put that to one side and I'll take you through the rest of the kit that we've got. So. What I have out is I have um, I have four paint brushes, and I'm not as the the focus of the tutorial will be on the on the pastel vignette background, but I am going to tell you a little bit of um, my thinking around about the paint. So I do have some paint brushes out because we'll do a tiny bit at the end. So I've got four sizes out. My smallest is um, ten zero. Then I have a five zero. I have a three zero. 
and then I have a, I think it's a three. Yes, it's a three. Okay, now these don't have to be any particular brand. This tiny one is um, an Art Master Miniature Series 100, the 10 0. The rest are just unbranded, I think. Yeah, they just say golden maple, but I think that's probably what the, the stem is made of. So you just need a, a range of um, fat to thick tips. If I just show you them on my hand, you'll see them better, I think. Can you see? So you just need a range from a range of three or four from big to small. And the reason I've got these out is because there's parts of this design. So you can see this beautiful, super cute sloth. So he's sitting on a um, on like an, um, an egg chair and these bits here, you can use a bigger brush for. And I would probably recommend you do. But when you get into these tiny details, see these tiny, these beautiful, tiny purple flowers, you'll probably need the smaller five to ten uh, zero brushes. So that's why I've got a range of these out. OK, now, if you were choosing to do this just on normal paper, if you were choosing to do this in the book and you were doing the pastel background, you will need one of these. So this is just um, an eraser pencil. This particular one is um, a Perfection 1056 Faber-Castell. It's basically just a rubber in the shape of a pencil. OK, and what the technique that I would use if I was doing this in the book and then um, colouring in the detail with coloured pencils, I would put the pastel on first and then use this to rub out the pastel on the individual little pieces to then colour them in. OK, so if you're choosing coloured pencils, you will need one of these. So I'll just put that to one side. What else have I got? So I have, I have, I have. A 0.2 black fine liner. This is a Stedler pigment fine liner. It doesn't have to be any particular brand. It just needs a tip kind of about that thick. And the reason for that is because you will um, inevitably go over some of these um, black highlighted uh, lines here. So the black outlines, you will inevitably go over it in the pastel. And whilst you can kind of rub, rub over it to clean it up a little bit, especially when you do some of these paint in here, you'll just need a a black finer just to kind of really pick up the per, the precision of these of these lines just to go over any little bits that you've you've kind of uh, you've gone over so then i have my prismacolor new pastels so you don't need new pastel sticks you can use pastel pots you could use any brand you like any brand at all so i have some mungu i have some faber castell pastel sticks i have some um I have some pastel pots, the, uh, oh gosh, I've forgotten the name, pan pastels, that's the one I'm thinking of, I have some pan pastels, in this instance I've just chosen to use these, what I've done for this particular page is I've just chosen a yellow, so I've got kind of like a canary yellow colour, and then I've got a light green, which is kind of a chartreuse colour, I've got a spring greeny colour, and then I've got a grass greeny colour, so I'm not going to give you the exact ones, because clearly you might not have these new pastels, you just need a yellow, a light green, a mid green and a dark green. OK, that's all you need. Then what I've got is I've got a little bit of a, a finishing off um, touch to my page. So if I just show you this, can you see on these tiny little purple flowers? I thought it would just be a nice finishing touch to just put some self adhesive tiny little gemstones on. OK, just so you pull out the centre of the flower a little bit. And it's Christmas, so we need a bit of bling. OK, so this is why I've got these out, just to show you what I used. It's just a sheet. I think these are one ninety nine, something like that from my local craft shop. They come in different colours. I put it against the white. You will be able to see it. So they come in different colours. And what I just did was I picked out the um, the yellow just and put them onto the, uh, the, the centre of the of the violet flowers. So you can see that they're self adhesive and I just use mine with a pair of tweezers to apply them okay so if you wanted to do some blinging up of your picture when you finished it that's what I did to mine okay so I'll put that to one side stick this underneath for one moment and then I quickly want to show you the paints so these are my uh, KJ designed by Karen metallic watercolours. I think there's roughly in here about 60 of the set of 90, although Karen is um, releasing new colours all the time. 
so I just used for my paints look at these beauties look at these beauties I used a variety of the of the golds and the bronzes and I used just about every green that I had down here just about every green okay and I think I used yes I did I used the French lavender for the little purple flowers so you've probably seen this before on my previous tutorials but that is Karen you can get these paints on Etsy etsy.com and if you put in the details exactly as it says here there you go you can see it KJ designed by Karen no spaces put the capitals as you see them there and you will be able to pick them up either individually or in sets she has actually got a Christmas set out at the moment which um, you'll have seen on a previous tutorial that I've done which is rather nice for a stocking filler as well okay that's just a little bit about Karen Right, let's get started. I'm just going to put these out of the way. This tin, by the way, this tin um, is just from eBay. Just a tin from eBay. I think it's around about 12 or 13 pounds. Now, when you buy um, smaller sets from Karen, she clearly she provides the tins for you. But just because I had this this rather large set growing that I've been collecting, I just found this, this rather nice tin from, from eBay. Okay. Let's get started. Okay. So I've got my page. Again, remember this is printed out on watercolour paper. I'm just going to move that up slightly for you. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be working from the inside out. So can you see on this beautiful vignette here, I've got the yellow and then I've got the chartreuse through the spring green, through the grass green. OK, so you've got your yellow in the middle, your light green, your mid green and your dark green towards the edges. And that's what a vignette does. You want your dark colours towards the outside and the lighter colours towards the inside to draw that eye in to the centre of the design. You will see some vignettes where they're not central. You will see some kind of artistic impressions where it might be in one corner. So your eye is drawn kind of this way. But this is a really nice design to, to do a vignette on simply because you've got a central super cute sloth that you can highlight and draw your eye into okay so i have my yellow new pastel and for reference in case you have got these it's 217 okay i think that's the color reference so a lot of you will snap these i think they're too pretty this grass green one was snapped by accident um, so I just tend to use, what you'll need is you'll just need, need a little, um, can you see if I put it up there, a little beveled edge, just so that you can apply it to the paper. And then all I'm going to do is very gently, so this is medium firm pressure, and you don't have to be accurate here at all. Everybody can give this a go. I'm just going to put in the yellow inside the frame of that egg seat okay medium firm on pressing and i'm not going right up to the edges of the design and you don't have to be too accurate because pastels are very very forgiving very forgiving i'll show you why in a second okay I'm just going to retrieve my little uh erase a pencil back so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to also put a ring of this light yellow uh, pastel just around the egg okay and you're not going to worry about going over any of this beautiful detail okay again medium firm everybody can have a go at this it's easy and it makes such a beautiful background and I know some of you aren't too confident with backgrounds and I can really understand that. But if you want something that you don't have to be an artist to try, then pastel backgrounds are a good way to get your confidence up. Okay. So I'm just following the shape of that egg. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is so I put that on in medium firm pressure. I'm just going to do a ring around the outside in slightly lighter pressure. So almost as if you were using Prismacolor pencils and putting yourself a blend line in. And just gently on the edge, just pressing very lightly. And that will help blend into the next colour. Okay. 
Easy as that. Then what I'm going to do, is I'm going to gently pick it up. I'm going to blow the excess off. OK, so we're not going to do anything with that for the moment. What we're going to do is go to our next colour, which is the kind of like the light green. It's, it's almost a chartreuse colour. And then I'm going to do exactly the same. So I'm going to go over that blend line, medium firm pressure and just follow the pattern. OK, so we're working from light to dark. Easy, easy, easy. You could even, I mean, this is an adult colouring channel. It's meant and designed for adults. You won't find kind of kids stuff on here. But if you've got the kids watching you, this is something they could have a crack at on a separate piece of paper. Although they will probably get nice and messy. Okay, same thing. Just going to gently pick it up and blow. My mid green, which is kind of like a spring green. Oh, sorry, I didn't give you the colour for that, did I? So the colour reference for this one is 348. And the colour reference for this one is 218. Okay. And we need to just put a little light touch blend line on. Getting carried away, you see. Just a little light touch around the edge. And if you were doing this in pencil, it would take you days. Which is why this is quite nice, because the blending would be perfect. And it's easy and it's quick. So we're going to go to the mid-green, the spring kind of green. And you'll reach the edge. On this colour, you'll reach the edge, because we'll only use the darkest grass green kind of colour in the very edges. OK, so don't worry if you reach the edges on the side. medium firm. Just go over that blend line of the light green. And then I'll show you what we do to blend it out when we've got all of these colours on. But can you see already how putting the very lightest, brightest colour in the centre of that vignette is really drawing your eye into the design already? So apologies for my arm going across the page. And this is my first video with my new iPhone 11 from Santa. So let's hope everything goes OK. Just gently around the outside. OK. Then again. Blow it off and then we're going to go to the darkest and then we're going to finish off these corners and this is where you'll need some paper underneath because we just need to go over the edges to make sure that we've got all of the design covered now don't worry it looks like you're obliterating this beautiful detail that we lose coloured for us but you're not i promise there's magic to come Just make sure you've got a nice even coverage. And this is the very edges of our vignette, so it's the darkest. And what you will need is, you will need a cloth to hand, a clean cloth, because we're going to finger blend this. And we'll need to clean our fingers through each shade of green. Okay, so I'm just going to go black and just get rid of that harsh-ish line and then we'll start blending it out. Okay. Right, what I'm going to do now is, before I do anything else, is get rid of this dirty top sheet. Okay. So, 
clean cloth. Okay. Move this up slightly. Right, now we are going to blend it and we're going to use a very, very simple tool. We're going to use your finger. So we're going to start, as we've just bled that colour down, we're going to start from um, the lightest to the darkest and work out over. So I'm just going to start. So just make sure your hands are cleanish. And I'm just going to blend it into the grain of the paper. And don't be frightened if you go over this inked design. I'm going to go over it purposely there and I'll show you why. Because this is what we do to clean things up. Okay, so while my finger is still yellow, I'm going to do this bit. So I'm just pushing the pastel into the paper and just kind of blushing it away. So we're just smoothing it out. And this is why I was saying if you were doing this in coloured pencil to get such a smooth blend, it would take you hours. Look how quick this is. Look how quick this is. And it's so pretty. OK, so that yellow is blended now. That yellow is blended. So can you see the difference between this and this? Because this isn't blended yet. So this is kind of what you want when you finger blended the yellow. You want it to be nice and smooth. Now, what I need to do next is get my cloth and clean my fingers, okay? You want to clean your fingers between every change of colour. Right. Now I'm going to take my eraser pencil and I'm just going to gently just where the inked lines are just remove the top of the pastel and I'm pressing just really gently because like I said before, pastel is really forgiving and it will come off very, very easily. Okay. So you're just showing these outlines a bit. Clean the little birdie up a bit. Oh, I've got a little bit of... I'm just using a stepler eraser to do these bigger bits rather than my pencil eraser. And can you see it just lifts off? So this is why you don't have to be very, very accurate at all while you're blending. Can you see? It just lifts off. Lifts off. Right. So we're going to go to blend the lovely light green, the chartreuse colour. So now I'm going to do kind of little, almost if you were scumbling with a pencil. So you're just blending that light green, this that, that chartreuse colour into the yellow. Okay. Firm pressure. So all I'm doing is pushing that pastel into the paper. Okay? So it's nice and smooth. And then again, I'm going to clean my hands. I'm going to do the same with the mid green. Can you see how it's just gradually getting beautifully darker? So try not to pick up of the very, try not to pick up any of the darker green yet, because we don't want that into the centre of our picture. We want that on the very edges to produce this vignette effect. Okay, now what we're going to do is, I'm going to clean my fingers and I'm going to do the outside edges. Okay. But can you see how quick and easy that is and how beautifully blended it is? So let's just finish off these corners because that will give you the last of the lovely blended effect. And I'm just pushing that colour into the page. Okay. And it's a lot of fun. It's very creative. You get very messy. But it's a lot of fun. And like I say, Lulu, this design of Lulu's is perfect for this technique. Because it's such a lovely design that uh, that draws you into the centre. Okay. Uh, yes, I'm going to quickly, just quickly. I know I'm on the same colour, but I've got a lot of pastel on my fingers. And 
And like I say, you don't have to have pastel sticks. You can have pastel pots. You just need a yellow, a light, a mid and a dark green to make this work. And you don't even have to have greens. I mean, I chose green because I wanted it to look like a, um, like a foresty kind of background. But you could choose any set of colours. You could choose a, a blue set. You could choose a light, mid and dark blue set if you wanted it to kind of look like a sky background. You don't have to use green. It's just the technique to produce the vignette that is more important with this tutorial. OK, so there we have it. Easy as that. OK, so let me just clean this area up a little bit. Again, I'm going to get rid of this messy top sheet. Okay. Now you can go back as many times as you want it. So if you wanted to blend it a little bit more, just go back to your lighter colour. So if you wanted to kind of blend this spring green a little bit more into this, just gently, just gently go over it and then re, you know, re-blend it. You can play with it as much as you like if you find that you haven't got a particularly perfect blend on either of your shading changes. Okay. Now then, like I said before, if I was doing this on normal paper and I wanted to colour the detail in in pencil, it's quite painstaking and I have done it before, but it produces a beautiful effect. But what you'd be looking to do is, um, is erasing all of these lovely little details as you go. OK, but I knew that I wanted to paint this, so I'm just going to paint and Karen's paints paint straight over pastel quite nicely. OK, so I'm not going to bother erasing anything. So. Let me just actually if I just go back to this and I want to show you something. So. Can you see? So what I chose to do was follow the principle of the vignette. So at the outer edges here, with whatever set of suite of colours I've used to do a particular strand of leaf, etc., I've put the darker at the outside corners. OK, so let me illustrate what I'm saying to you. So can you see, can you see this strand here? Can you see the strand here? So in this corner, because the vignette pastel is darker, there you go, there you can see it. So I've got four leaves of the dark and then as it goes towards the centre I've got mid green and then where it's lightest closest to the exit I've got three I've got three of the lightest greens okay so I've just followed the vignette principle in the details so again if I show you if I show you these little these little flowers here can you see I've used a kind of um, a gold for the inside ones closest to Mr Sloth then I've used kind of like a an orangey gold for the middle bit and then towards the edge where it's the darkest in the vignette I've used a bronze okay so Again, if you're doing that in coloured pencil, you can follow exactly the same principle. You just put your darker colours towards the outside and you can see what a gorgeous, gorgeous effect that is. OK. So, 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 let me just do you one quick example of how I've done that. And what I'm going to grab is I have a just sheet of kitchen paper because what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lie it over there so that my hand doesn't get dusty because I'm right-handed, so it's going to get dusty on here and I just want to keep it as clean as I possibly can. If it does get a bit dirty, as I say, don't worry, the pastel will just lift with your eraser. So if you put a big pastel fingerprint on there, don't worry, it'll just rub off. But I'm just going to be a little bit careful. And then I'm going to grab my paints. So I might need to push this over a little bit. OK. Now these are dry. I've just got my little paint pot of water. These are dry. They don't need to be prepared. They, they, um, just move that up there slightly for you. They're, they're pretty good. You can apply them pretty quickly. Okay. So I'm not going to zoom you in for this because it's not the painting technique that I want to tell you about. It's the, it's the colour principle. So I'm just going to take my biggest, my, my three brush. Can you see all of these paints? Can you see all of these paints? Yes, you can. So I'm just going to pick a light, a mid and a dark green in my paints. So I'm going to pick, I think this is lime. So I'm going to pick my lime. I'm going to pick, 
pick, what am I going to pick? I'm going to pick Bejeweled, which is this mid one here. And I'm going to pick Nebula, which is this darker one. So I've got my biggest brush. I'm just going to dip it in the water and whip the paint. And then they're good to go. Okay, I'm just going to use my cloth and just clean that off. Put that up there, actually. What did I say? Bejeweled. Nebula. Then I'm going to go to my 5-0 brush, which is not quite the smallest one that I've got out. Okay, let me just dig out my 5-0. Come to mummy. Where are you? There you are. Right, so I'm just going to be working on this little leaf set here. Can you see these? Yes, you can. So, because I'm right-handed, I'm not going to start here and then work up because my hand would have the potential to smudge this paint. So I'm going to work this way, okay? So which would mean that I take my darkest first, my nebula. And just literally, because you can see, you can still see on, under the pastel where the beautiful detail of the design is. I'm just going to make these very outer leaves, this beautiful metallic dark green, this nebula colour that Karen's released. It's a relatively new one. And she might not, she might not have all of the colours that I'm mentioning here in the Etsy shop at one time. OK, but there's a really easy answer to that. There's always a contact seller button to press on an Etsy shop. And all you need to do is drop her an email on that through Etsy and ask her if she's got any stock because it might just be that they're not shown online but she's got some in stock which is usually the case so she's got some in her art room at home but she just hasn't got any online um, to show you that they're on sale so there's a multitude of colours that are on this site but just if there's one or two that you can't find on there just drop her a line and she will be able to help you. And these paints just fly on beautifully over the pastel. There we go. So now I'm going to move to my mid green. So I'm just going to wash my brush. So I'm going to go to Bejeweled. So this is going, so this mid green paint is going over the mid green pastel. So you're just following the principle and it just all adds to that beautiful focused central effect. And again, if you were doing this in blues, so you would just pick three blue paints or three blue pencils, depending on what you were, what media you were using. Okay. We'll just do these two in this mid green. really relaxing very relaxing if you've got some time off over Christmas I would recommend having a, a play with some paints just makes a change to your color pencils there we go okay so I'm just gonna clean my brush and we're gonna go to that lightest lime just gonna re-wet that slightly And these paints smell like Christmas. They're kind of like honey and cinnamon and patchouli and just all things nice. Okay. 
No, that's better. It's just not quite wet enough. And we're just going to finish off these last little three petals in the lightest. So where I've got my chartreuse going into yellow pastel, I've got the lightest colour green for the detail. And they dry pretty quickly. One last leaf and then I'll quickly show you what I did for the, the little tiny purple flowers. Okay, there we go. Easy as that. And can you see how beautiful that is if I just move that in the light? Well, clearly they're still wet, but you get the principle. Okay, so I'm going to clean that brush and I'm going to wet my French lavender colour. I'm just going to take my slightly bigger brush. This is the French lavender here. Beautiful colour. Back to my five zero. And you could use your ten zero for this, but I'm just gonna for the sake of the tutorial, because I've got this one in my hand, I'm just gonna use this one. Okay. So I'm just gonna uh let me find a good one. This one. Can you see this one? Yep. Yeah. So I'm just gonna paint this. Being careful because it's a small detail. And this is where your fine tip brushes will help you a lot. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just demonstrate what I did with the tiny little gemstone in the centre, but clearly you would need to wait until this purple paint is dry. There we go. So if I just make a quick point as well about this. I didn't put them on every single one. So I only put them on the bigger, the bigger ones. So there's some tiny ones here that I just left. Just because, you know, just, just pick the detail out here and there on the bigger ones. There you go. You can see them there. Just pick the detail out on the bigger ones. So I'm just going to quickly grab my gemstones and my tweezers. And like I say, I picked the yellow ones for the centre. I'm just going to pull it off. And like I say, this paint is wet. You would wait for it to dry. There we go. Just got a really, really pretty little gemstone for the centre of the flower, just to add a little bit of pretty detail. Okay, so if I move that up, you can see there. Okay, so I hope that's been useful. As always, drop me a line if you want to ask any questions. I'm hoping this is going to go out live on Sunday, the 8th of December at 7 pm GMT, if it works. We'll have an hour's live chat and you'll be watching this and answering asking me questions as you watch fingers crossed it works okay so i hope that's been really useful and um bye for now <laughs>